Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Chris. Guess what? Spring has sprung. It is the second week of March and today was the first hint or one of the first hints of spring here in the Midwest. I think it was actually in the 60s today, which means it's going to be 20 degrees in three days. That's how it goes here. But we all get excited. Everybody's walking around outside because spring is in the air. And for a content creator, that means we're going to start talking about spring perfumes. And today I'm going to start with spring perfumes that are designer fragrances. There are a lot of people that really like to hear about the designer fragrances out there. Some of them are more affordable than others, but I've got a great list of designer fragrances that are going to be some of my spring go-tos and I can't wait to wear them in the warmer weather coming up. I think I'm going to start the list with the first two fragrances that are transitional fragrances. They they are a little bit sweet. They are kind of florally gourmand. So those are good fragrances for the transition into the warmer weather. The first one is a lovely fragrance called White Magnolia, and this is by Loewe. And this is a fantastic floral fragrance that has gourmand elements. It has magnolia, there's cotton candy, there is yuzu, probably a little bit of musk, and it's just a super nice, light, floral gourmand that is fantastic. I've had it for over a year that's great in the cold and it's really good in the warmer weather, but transitional weather, it's when this shines because it has this lovely floral quality. It feels very spring, this beautiful magnolia note, but it also has this cotton candy in it. And it's not super sweet. It's not this overly sweet, sugary cotton candy, but it just has a light, the cotton candy in here is very deft. It's done with a very light hand. It has a light sweetness to it, a little bit of light sponge sugar, and this, there's this beautiful yuzu in the background. Now yuzu is a Japanese grapefruit. It's sweeter than a typical grapefruit, so you've got this nice, you've got that cotton candy sweetness or that sponge sugar sweetness offset with a little bit of that tart yuzu. This is a happy perfume. It's very, very likable. And when I wear it, people around me say, gosh, you smell so, so really good, so pretty. The next one is just a classic go-to. When I think of spring, when I think of spring vanillas, I think of green vanillas. And the first vanilla I think of, other than Dior Addict, is this beauty right here, Angelique Noir, one of the prettiest green vanillas ever created. This is so incredibly unique. This was one of the first expensive Guerlain fragrances I bought when I got my channel. It holds a special place in my heart and so I do kind of baby it just a little bit, but it's just so dang spectacular. It's got that beautiful rich Guerlain vanilla, which is offset by a very noticeable Angelique note. Angelica is part of the celery family. So it's green, it's crisp, but it has a little bit of pepperiness to it. So it's like a peppery, fresh, green celery. And that's what you smell. When you smell this perfume, it really kind of hits you in the face. So you're either going to love it or you don't. But there's also a pear in here, and I think the pear pairs well with the Angelica, these two beautiful green notes. One is a little bit peppery, one's a little bit more spicy. The pear adds a nice fruity sweetness, and it's got a little bit of jasmine. In the background, the jasmine is like a supporting role. It's not a star. Gosh, this is so beautiful. It's not a beast. This one is a moderate wear with more of a tight scent bubble, but this is an elegant perfume. I wear it when I kind of want to feel special. Right. Two more designers that just scream spring and green to me. Well, they scream green to me because they are. The juice inside is green. The first one is called Lucky. This is a very, um, this is a very lily of the valley prominent perfume. So you really do have to love Lily of the Valley. I've always been a lover of most Lily of the Valley fragrances. It also has, um, oh gosh, it's got ozonic notes. So ozonic notes to me are fresh and watery without being aquatic. I'm not a huge fan of aquatic notes that those don't always work out well, but I guess an ozonic note or profile works out well with me. It just adds like a, a freshness to it, like a watery freshness that's not quite salty or marine like. It's really, really pretty. This just is so happy. It's floral without being too heady and it's clean without being screechy. So it's kind of this nice, you know, middle of the road. Green, floral, clean perfume that I absolutely love. It wears lightly. This is just the perfect, almost the epitome 
of a beautiful sunny springtime day right here. The other one that's very green goes in another direction. It's green and fruity and it's beautiful. It's Burberry for her, the EDT. This perfume really smells like the juice looks. It's got pear, it's got peony, it's got musk. We've got black currant and strawberry kind of swimming together. It has this beautiful, very happy, light fruitiness. It's not syrupy, it's not overly sweet. Definitely has peony in here. I definitely love the addition of uh, the peony here. I love the addition of the florals and it goes nicely with all those fruits, the pear, the strawberry, the black currant. They just work so well together. This nice, clean, fresh, dewy, watery musk, and it's sweet. It has a really nice sweetness without being sticky or syrupy. And for an EDT, this has really, really good longevity. Absolutely love this one. So the next two are these beautiful floral perfumes, including Gucci Bloom, Fiore, oh, you see that sun coming in the window? Fiore de Ambrosia. My friend, one of my really good friends, her signature scent is Gucci Bloom, and even though I love it on her, I never really wanted to kind of steal her signature scent. So I got one that has, I got a flanker that has a heavy note of honeysuckle. I'm always looking for the perfect honeysuckle perfume. This is a beautiful white flower fragrance that has this lovely note of honeysuckle. So it's that, Tons of white flowers, definitely jasmine. Tuberose, rose, you've got honeysuckle, so it's just this beautiful bouquet of flowers. I definitely do get that honeysuckle. I do love honeysuckle. It's got this honeyed sweetness to it. I do believe even though this is a burst of white flowers in the beginning, it's like this beautiful bouquet of white flowers. As this dries down, I get more rose in the dry down. It's very, very floral but rose is coming out more in the dry down and maybe just a little bit of sandalwood in the base in addition to this really nice musk. So I think this is a fantastic designer floral fragrance that has really, really good longevity. So the next one is from Armani Privé and Rouge Malachite gets all the attention. It gets all the notoriety, but my personal favorite is this one right here. I'm more of a team Vert Malachite. This is a beautiful, lily forward fragrance you do have to like lilies but this is a very different lily some lilies can be sour screechy this lily is very very different it's very buttery it's very creamy it's very resinous and it has a tropical vibe has a very tropical vibe due to some lang lang in here so it is tropical without being sunscreeny and the reason why it doesn't have don't go into the sunscreen zone is that it has beautiful sweetness. It's got this vanillic sweetness and it has a resinous sweetness to it. So it's, it makes it very creamy, very buttery. And it's definitely perfect. It would be perfect for some sort of special event if in the warmer spring weather or the summer. And this is very heady, very strong. I have found that I have to go really easy on the trigger, otherwise this can be a bit overwhelming. But okay, the next two I'm gonna go with some beautiful springtime woody fragrances. This next bottle is, I don't know what number bottle I'm on. It is one of the prettiest woody fragrances in my collection. This is bottle number two or three. This is such a classic woody perfume. It's woods, it's iris, it's incense, it's a non-foodie vanilla, a little bit of musk. I think this actually has sugar cubes in it. One of my favorite note profiles is this one right here. It smells similar, very similar to Bois d'Argent from Christian Dior. And I would actually put it in the ballpark of one of my favorite perfumes in all of my collection, Louis Rouge by Christian Louboutin. These would be in the same category. That one has more iris. This one is more woody. This one has incense. The same non-foodie vanilla. This one has a little bit more musk, maybe a little bit of ambergris. This is just so classy. This is the perfect work fragrance because it's not very strong. In fact, a lot of people aren't going to like it because it's not a powerhouse. You do have to overspray this, but when it smells this good, I don't care, this is absolutely beautiful. And the iris in here leans on the powdery side. It's not, there. there is not that lipsticky iris in here. I think it just lends a nice dustiness to it, a nice powderiness to it, which goes well with the woods in here, which I think is just driftwood, but together they just add a nice 
dryness to this beautiful fragrance. If you're looking for a good, work-friendly, non-foodie, woody vanilla, this is absolutely stunning. The next woody fragrance is this little beauty right here. It's, oh, not that one, it's this one right here. It is called Cedrus. This is so pretty. This smells like a beautiful spring day. This can be worn in any weather, but it's going to be really, really good in the warm and the hot weather, spring and summer, because it's just a very fresh, clean, woody fragrance with some oak moss. It has this citrusy freshness to it. I would put it in the ballpark. I mean, it's the same type of fragrance as Jo Malone, Wood Sage and Sea Salt. I mean, they're not the same perfume, but they're the same type of fragrance. It's fresh, it's earthy, it's woody, it's mossy. And it is light wearing, it is on the lighter side, like Jo Malone, Wood Sage, and Sea Salt, but there's just something so incredibly lovely and classy about this. Another good work-friendly fragrance because it, again, wears on the light side. It's not going to, people are just gonna think you smell fresh and clean. Okay, I've got two more, and then I think I'm going to call it a day. The next one is from this beautiful Estee Lauder line, and I've talked about Infinite Sky many, many times. This one is called Radiant Mirage. And it is a floral patchouli fragrance done in the same vein as Gridior. Now, they're not the same fragrance, but I would say they are very, very similarly done. They have this fresh floral patchouli aspect to it. This one, I wanna say the flower is jasmine. I would have not, I would not have guessed that. I would have guessed like a rose. This smells more like rose than jasmine to me. The patchouli in here, is very fresh, it's very pleasant, it's not earthy, it doesn't smell like wet cement, it doesn't smell like damp ground. It, it's a very nice designer, likable patchouli that's in a ton of designer fragrances. This also has a little bit of a, just a little bit of a pepperiness, a very slight pink pepper in here, and I get like this really nice fruity sweetness, like a plum, I'm not sure, I don't even think fruits are listed. It, it probably has incomplete notes, but I get this very light fruity sweetness in the background, like an apple or a plum, but in no way is this overly juicy or overly syrupy fruity. No, no, no. The stars are the florals. It's a floral patchouli, little bit of pepper, and little bit of some sweet, Fruits that I might be making up, but I definitely get it. So if you like Gris Dior, if you like the type of fragrance like Gris Dior, I really think you're going to like this again. Nothing is blind by safe, but this is absolutely spectacular. I love it. And I'm gonna do the last one with a fragrance that used to be my signature scent over 10 years ago. This is a fragrance that every time I wore it out, people would, re would recognize me. They would give me a hug and say, oh, you smell so good, you're wearing that perfume again. Nowadays, it's Baccarat Rouge 540, but back then, like 10 years ago, when I would go to school functions or swim meets or volleyball games or any type of function where I'd be around a lot of people, I would always wear this beauty right here. It's still a great fragrance. Narcisa Rodriguez, for her, the EDT. I have the EDT and the EDP. They are very similar, but they move in different directions. The original has orange blossom and patchouli. This one has rose and peach, but the background musk is still the same. It's just such a well-done perfume. And if I wanted to wear something where I was guaranteed not to overpower people, not offend people, get compliments, be hug friendly. In other words, people would think I smelled great when I hugged them. It would be this one. I neglect it because I have so many other perfumes now, but this is such a good classic and my daughter recognizes it to this day when she sees it in my little perfume collection. She said, oh, mom, I remember that perfume. You used to wear it all the time when I was younger. So it does hold a lot of special memories to me. This one wears on the lighter side, I would say like moderate, moderate projection, moderate performance, but uh, a, a great go-to and it just reads springtime to me. So that was it. I think that was 10 of my spring designer picks. Fragrances that I know I'm going to be pulling for as the weather gets warmer. And I have to put away, sadly, my heavier, spicy, incensey, ambery fragrances for this beautiful, warmer weather that's just around the corner. Hey, before I sign off, I would love it if you would tell us what your favorite springtime designer fragrances are in the comments below. Thanks again for sticking around. Thanks for watching. And to all of you who are always so sweet and kind and give me a thumbs up, I really, really appreciate it. 
And with that, I'd love to see you on the next one.